What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick compositing breakdown of our CGI crater that we've added to live action footage, utilizing Blender 3D, and then of course, compositing inside of After Effects. This is not really a tutorial, but more of a compositing breakdown showing how I composited the various passes that I've exported from Blender in our last video and combined them together into the live action shot. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. This is our final shot here, and I'm playing it back at half resolution just to save some rendering time here but this is the general idea uh, just a very basic composite I have a few passes down here in our uh, layers but nothing too crazy complicated and as you probably saw in the previous video if we open up blender and uh, this is our blender scene here if we go to our compositing tab here we can see that we have three different file outputs and uh, I've shown this in our previous video but what we have here is we have our background view layer here which is our shadow pass our main shadow pass is going into one file output then we have a mist pass of our view layer going into a file output as well so we can add some depth to the scene fairly easily and then finally we've exported on our foreground view layer which is the rest of our CG elements we've exported the 3d crater itself into a compositing node which uh, will be output in our main file output here so just three different passes here three different file outputs our beauty pass being our composite file output and I've just used those three passes inside of After Effects and combined them to get our live action shot all right so inside of After Effects I'll just go through the layers that I've composited with here we'll just go further into our shot here find a nice frame maybe around here all right so I'll just start at the bottom here and just go through each layer one by one all right so the first layer that we've added is our live action shot on top of that we've added our beauty pass of our crater and nature elements and right under this beauty pass but above our live action shot we have our shadow pass and it's pretty important to render your shadow pass and beauty pass separately so that you can control how bright your shadows are for example if I select this shadow pass and open it up here you can see that I've decreased the opacity to 90 but we can actually very easily control how much shadow we want to give of these plants on our riverbed here so probably uh, 90 was about right but what I usually do when I'm compositing a shadow in the scene is I look at other shadows in the scene for example this kind of shadow from the edge of our riverbed here you try to match that shadow level to the shadows that are being created by our nature elements so if we increase this opacity on the shadow pass we can kind of try to match that as best we can I think 90 is just about right maybe a little bit less maybe 85 86 but that's the general idea and uh, as you can see if I isolate these shadows pass and live action shot by itself you can very easily compare your CG shadow levels to the other live action shadows in your live action shot so you can match them a little bit more effectively and uh, after adding our shadow pass on top of this we've used our mist pass layer so as you can see here it's a little bit hard to tell because I've also dialed down the opacity of the mist pass as well but this is just our mist pass and since our scene is a uh, very basic geometry the main area that our mist pass is different is is in the crater itself here so uh, this is what our mist pass looks like and as you can see here you can very easily just lift the shadows a tiny bit as if there's a little bit of volumetric lighting inside of our crater here but uh, honestly probably don't really need this very much but uh, it does add a little bit of uh, realism and a little bit of kind of uh, volumetric lighting feel but I'll probably just keep this down at five percent and those are our three passes that we've exported from Blender. In addition to those three passes, I've also added an atmosphere live action element on top of our crater here. And this is just a piece of stock footage from Action Essentials, a super old stock footage library that I use all the time anyway. And as you can see here by itself, it's just a very basic cloud and I've just animated it over the course of the shot to kind of move and stay in our crater. Um, super rudimentary setup there. I've also dialed down the opacity to 60% and as you can see here before and after it just lifts those shadows in the crater a little bit and also combined with the mist pass it gives a little bit of variation in the volumetrics that you might see in this crater. So uh, just a nice way to add a little bit of variation to your scene. Finally on top of all of these different elements I've rotoscoped out our bridge in the foreground here. As you can see here these plants aren't supposed to be on top of the bridge but are rather supposed to be below Below the bridge so I've just rotoscoped out the bridge in this layer and if we isolate it by itself you can see that it's just an element that we've rotoscoped out by hand using uh, a mask here 
I've just used several masks to kind of rotoscope out our bridge here and make it its own singular element. And now, as you can see, all of our different grass elements that should be below our bridge element here are uh, being hidden effectively. And finally, the last two layers that I added to our scene here is just a black letterbox to give it that widescreen feel. And then I've added an adjustment layer with some Lumetri color on it to uh, pop the colors a little bit and give it a little bit of a film look. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I composited this final shot. Super simple setup here. All I really needed for this shot was a beauty pass and a shadow pass, and then I can just play around with those two passes. But I've added the mist pass just for fun to lift those shadows within the crater itself and give it a little bit of volume volume like uh, there's a little bit of dust or atmosphere in the crater itself but uh, not really necessary for this specific shot as there's not a lot of mist elsewhere. Anyways guys that's it for this video I hope it was helpful feel free to check out the full tutorial on how to create this shot inside of Blender and export these passes for the compositor of your choice I'll put a link to that video in the description below if you haven't seen it as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see next and I'll see you next time.